Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 15.2 RC and RC2 have been out for a few days or maybe a little bit less depending on which version and should be releasing to the public soon. So this is good news because iOS 15.1 and iOS 15.1.1, depending on the device you have, currently have a lot of bugs with cellular, lockups, battery, and more. So I've been using iOS 15.2 RC and RC2 on my iPhone 13 Pro Max and iPad Pro full time for the past few days. And also, as many of you have commented on the YouTube community poll, as you can see here over the past couple of days, thanks to everyone that commented on this, there are over 15,000 votes and over 175 comments. I've taken all of this data to help get a better picture of what the update is like for most of us. So in this video, I'm going to cover everything from cellular to Bluetooth, to Wi-Fi, apps, storage, CarPlay, battery life, and more based off my experience and your experience. So let's start off with stability. Now, just a couple days ago, Apple released iOS 15.2 RC2, or Release Candidate 2. They found an issue with it, released it with a new modem update, and it seems to be very stable on the 13 Pro Max for me. I haven't had a single crash or lockup or, or anything like that, no freezing whatsoever since I've had that update. With RC, or the original version, on the 13 Pro Max, I actually had it freeze up. I haven't had any of those issues since RC2 was released on this device. Now, Apple pushed RC2 just on the 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max, 13 and 13 Mini, but they didn't push it for any of the other devices, so you'll have RC1. That means it was stable enough for the other devices. So something was different that they needed to fix, and I think it had to do with the modem and different cellular data switching back and forth. And with RC2, cellular switching is much better, but some are still having issues with switching, mostly on RC1. Now this makes me think that when they push out the update to the public, which will be soon, and I'll talk about that in a moment, I think they're going to not only push a new build number, but also push along with that maybe carrier updates. So typically when you get an update, sometimes you'll get carrier updates and things like that that will help it be a little bit more stable and more. And so that hopefully will be what's coming with iOS 15.2 release when it comes out next week or so. Now, as far as Bluetooth is concerned, while well, this past week, Apple pushed out a lot of updates, including AirPods Pro updates. And since then, with Bluetooth, I haven't had a single issue with AirPods, AirPods Pro, AirPods 3, or AirPods Mac. So they all seem to be performing well, they connect well, and they switch between devices well for me. A few people did mention some odd issues from here to there with their car or third-party devices, but that could be specific to those devices. However, with with the Apple devices, it seems to be okay, and most report the same thing. The same is true with Wi-Fi, so I haven't had any issues with Wi-Fi. Now that sometimes can be dependent on your router, of course, but in general, the overall experience has been good. And also, as far as apps, things like that, most of them are working fine. However, I still do have that issue with the Google Smart the smart lock app, which I don't see it here, but the smart lock app will crash when it triggers Bluetooth. So Apple may have tried changed something with Bluetooth in this update, but the smart lock app seems to crash for me. However, it hasn't been updated in six months. And I've seen a few other people mention apps that do seem to crash for them as well. And they'll probably need an update. And if they do crash, it may be that they haven't been updated for a while. So they may need to push an update to fix that. But it does make me think that they changed something with Bluetooth. Now, when it comes comes to storage, I am still seeing people with that storage bug. So maybe we'll go to the iPhone 11 here, we'll go to settings, go to general, then iPhone storage. Some people are seeing excessive storage being used, and some are saying it's taking a very long time for storage to load. So you can see it's taking a while here for it to load. Of course, there we go. That wasn't too long. Sometimes it just doesn't load at all. But you'll see for me, it seems to be doing okay. And in general, I haven't had too many issues with storage on this. Mostly it's being taken up by photos and apps and some messages data. So I should offload that and it's giving me those suggestions here. So nothing excessive on this device and the same is true on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. I haven't seen the storage bug myself, but I know a lot of people have had it. So you'll see I'm using 106 gigabytes of storage. And again, it is taking a little bit of time to load, but that's okay as long as it's not excessive. That was pretty quick. And again, if we go all the way down, you'll see the storage is changing and it will update a little bit as you go into these settings. So in general, storage has been okay for me, but I know quite a few of you say it just doesn't load at all or it's showing excessive storage being taken up. Again, this leads me to think maybe they haven't fixed that yet or it will be fixed in the future. 
that music bug with streaming is still there and they said they didn't fix it. At least it's in the notes of RC1 and RC2 that they didn't fix the music streaming issue. So when you're streaming music, sometimes what will happen is the phone will get very warm. It'll use excessive CPU and then it will drain the battery faster. So they're aware of that issue, but that's only when streaming music. So that can be an issue. Now, as far as CarPlay, I have seen good reports of CarPlay as well, and CarPlay seems to be working well for most people. So where it was a problem with earlier versions or even iOS 15.1, 15.1.1, it seems to be fixed in this update. I haven't had any issue with widgets sort of not showing properly or going blank anymore. And it seems to be a much more stable update. It's the update I think many of us wanted from the beginning. Now on the iPad, I haven't really had too many issues. I originally had a touch bug that I experienced the first day with YouTube, but YouTube only, no other apps. So I would go to touch something on YouTube and it wouldn't work. I'd have to close the app out, open it again, and it would work fine. We saw this in earlier versions of iOS 15, that went away and now it's back. So that could be due to something Apple changed in the update, but YouTube will need to follow and update their app, but they do that pretty often. So that's not too much of a concern. Also battery life on this does not seem to be improved, unfortunately. So battery life on the iPad does not seem to be really that great still. I was hoping that this update would fix it. And when I got it new, it easily got eight to 10 hours. Now it's getting closer to six regularly. So you'll see it was last charged to 86%. A day or so ago at 7:56 p.m., and it's had about two and a half hours of usage and one hour and 46 minutes of screen off time. Although I never use this with the screen off, I don't stream music or anything else. And you'll see I'm at 58%. So again, I'm getting about five to six hours of screen on time on this device. It's not so great. And battery life on the iPhone though has been reported to me by a lot of people as being quite good. In fact, a lot of people are saying that it's a big improvement over not only iOS 15.2 beta four and earlier betas, but also iOS 15.1 and earlier versions of iOS 15. So if we take a look at my battery, my battery health's at 100% on my 13 pro max. And if we go to the last 10 days, Take a look at yesterday. I had three hours and 19 minutes of screen on time, three hours and 43 minutes of screen off time and used about, well, about 35 to 40% of my battery. And it, it's about the same each day. So again, two hours and 50 minutes of screen on time, seven hours and 12 minutes of screen off time. And I only used a quarter of my battery. So I easily get through the day. I'm hitting about 50% of my battery by the time I go to bed. Usually it's off the battery for, or off the charger for a time of about 12 to 15 hours. And I really have no issues. Now I'm not using it a hundred percent of the time during those hours, but I go to bed with pretty good battery life. It was on the car charger a little bit today as I was driving around and you'll see I'm at 86%. I never really have to think about battery with this update. I always have enough battery to get me through the day and it's been better than any update I've seen with iOS 15 so far. And a lot of you are reporting the same thing. Now, before we take a look at the YouTube community poll, let's take a look at when we should expect this update to release to the public. And based off last year, it will come out on the 14th. If it comes out the same day as last year, it could come out Monday, which they did last year also on the 13th, or it could come out on the 15th. We don't know exactly, but we do know that Apple probably is going to release it this week as that's what they typically do when a release candidate is out. Unless they need additional time and find more bugs in this that they need to fix before the final release, I would expect it probably Monday or Tuesday with another version, 15.3 beta one, probably on the 16th. That's what they did last year with 14. So iOS 14.3 came out, then later in the week they came out with 14.4 betas. It's just what Apple does. They'll continue to push those betas like they normally do. And that's what they do normally. Also, for those of you wondering if you should update to this version when it comes out, if you're already on iOS 15, I would say absolutely. Again, it's the most stable version I think we've seen of iOS 15, and it will get better as time goes on as they're fixing more and more bugs in the update overall. So I would highly recommend installing it. And yes, I think it's good enough to be released to the public based off my experience and your experience in the YouTube community poll. And so as you can see in the community poll, there's 15,000 votes at the time of this video and 179 comments. So that's a huge amount. So thank you to everyone that commented and voted and 19% of you are on iOS 15.2 RC. 42% of you are on iOS 15.1 or older, 
and 32% of you are on iOS 15.1.1 or older. That tells me what devices you're using as well as that was only released to specific devices. Also, 4% of you are still on iOS 14.8.1 and 3% of you are still using iOS 13.7 or older. Some people have asked me why I don't have Android on this this poll anymore. And the reason is I just don't have space. When Apple switches to 15.2, we won't have all of these extra versions here. And maybe we'll add that a little bit later. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the comments. Lance says, I'm only having problems with iPad OS 15.2 RC and it's killing my charging through the iPad USB-C. I have to charge through the magic keyboard to charge it up. I can charge other devices from the iPad, just not the iPad itself. And I haven't heard of a charging bug with the iPad. It should work. Maybe you want to try a different cable or possibly a different plug. It should charge though, either way. Nico says using iOS 15.2 RC on my iPhone 11 and it's running perfectly fine. Battery life is amazing, way better than 15.1 and performance also feels a little bit better than 15.1. Miku Chan says iOS 15.2 RC on an iPhone SE second generation. Better performance, but only a little bit. My apps load a tad bit faster now. Apps close automatically in the background, even if they're suspended only a few minutes. So RAM management may not be the best for you. Although I haven't personally experienced that on the newer phones. Battery life still the same for me. It lasts for at least eight hours before I need to charge it. I don't use my phone that much. Storage still takes a long time to load. AirPods optimized battery charging where it shows weird text instead of legible text has been fixed for me, but I'm not sure of it because of 4C165 firmware and or switching my iPhone language to English UK. I did notice that's been fixed for a little while with the betas. Chris Palmer says iOS 15.2 RC on my iPhone 13 Pro finally have a build that seems to resolve some of those quirky bugs. Stock note app does not freeze. Battery life is good. I've not not noticed any battery drain. Good update. Maybe our developers will get this software locked down. iOS 15 has been way too buggy. Travis says I'm on iOS 15.2 RC on my iPhone 12 Pro Max and it's been fantastic. Battery life has improved dramatically on my device. Very smooth performance, and I think it's ready for release next week. Cameron says, pretty good for me on RC, other than receiving a wallpaper in messages so it shows up as a file. When airplaying to HomePod, it won't show in volume slider and control center. And other than that, it's been very good. I do know for a fact that with RC2, he said that the HomePod returned to the volume slider. So that seems to be fixed for him. Also, it's been very good. Best version of iOS 15.2 for me on the 13 Pro Max and iPad Pro 12.9 from 2020. Saul Rob Kalkarni says, and hopefully I said that properly, iOS 15.2 RC is quite good. Performance is a tiny bit better than the betas. Apps are still closing in the background for me on my SE2. They didn't in 14.8 or 15.0.2, but app opening has been slightly faster. Battery life is meh and bugs are few. The keyboard, for example, I use Swift key test, Swift key test flight has been crashing since 15.1, but maybe that's because Microsoft hasn't updated it in almost 70 days. Air of Aurora says, hi Aaron, I've been using the RC on my iPhone 8 plus and battery and performance is greatly improved. I'm just sick of the storage bug. It's showing 20.41 gigabytes and it's so annoying. Hopefully it gets sick fixed soon, but overall great. Jay says I'm on iOS 15.2 RC and it works very smoothly for me. Thanks for the videos. Appreciate it. Thank you. And so that's everything with iOS 15.2. RC and RC2. And like I said, we probably should see that update this coming week, typically on Monday or Tuesday. Now I wasn't able to record this video outside since it's been really rainy and pretty poor weather, but hopefully I'll be able to do that again soon. And also I've been trying to include some older devices and here I have an iPhone 10 that I actually need to charge, but if there's a specific phone you would like to see, maybe see how performance is on it or something along those lines, let me know in the comments below and I'll try and include the phones that relate to you best, but let me know which one would be best for you. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.